And welcome to the Houston Newsmakers Extra. We've been talking with Congressman Al Green about a number of topics, and I want to get into what's going on now in this community related to the coronavirus uh, vaccines. Congressman, you've been on the front lines of that in the community, trying to make sure that your constituents have access to that. How are, are, are you concerned or not concerned about how the rollout has been happening and the equal access to the folks in your community to be able to get them? Well, I think we can do more, but I am pleased that uh, President Biden came to Houston after opening up a station over at NRG, where we're putting in 6,000 shots per day uh, in the arms of people. I think this is a very good thing. But there are people who need transportation, and uh, Harris County has been assisting with this because there are persons who live in the various neighborhoods who don't have access to NRG by way of bus without having to traverse downtown or go around town to get to that site. Uh, and I want to see everybody get the opportunity. So we are encouraging that persons would do more to, uh, to, to help other persons get into, into these sites. And if you can help someone with a car, uh, to give them a ride. Uh, do what you can to get everybody vaccinated because in the end, that's how we all win when we have the vaccinations and we get herd immunity. You are you're kind of out of out of the box thinker when it comes to certain things, especially as it relates to civil rights and things like that that have to do with rights of people. You talked to me earlier about a Department of Reconciliation that you're interested in trying to pursue. What is that uh, intended to be and what is the purpose of it? Well, thank you. I'm a liberated Democrat, uh, which means that uh, <clears throat> I'm unbought and unbossed uh, <laughs> with reference to a Department of Reconciliation. We are in this country so divided that it is difficult for us to do the things that are necessary to maintain a standard of living that will be acceptable to all. I do believe that we need a Department of Reconciliation. We tried to do it in 1868 when Andrew Johnson was president, but he was not the person to uh, cause this to happen. This department would have a Secretary of Reconciliation similar to a Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Commerce. And this person would wake up every day with the mission of eliminating invidious discrimination in all of its form. That would be uh, sexism, it would be anti-Semitism, racism, Islamophobia, homophobia, nativism, to, to eliminate this hate that we have seen and that the former president exploited. And it would have funding, about 10% of the Department of, of uh, uh, Defense funding, uh, an amount equal to that was what I have recommended, but it can be less or it can be more. The point is we need a department that's funded that will work toward eliminating hate uh, in this country to the extent that we can. And I think that uh, this would be a really powerful thing for this president to do. He has the bona fides to get it done. I hope that he'll at least try with the Department of Reconciliation. We must reconcile. You know, listening to you, you have to be an eternal optimist to think that this is something that even could be done. I mean, I get that from you. That's who you are. Uh, but I'm looking at the fact that when we had January 6th happen and we can't yes. even get Congress to agree on a commission to be able to look into it. That's how badly separated this country is. Some of it might have to do with uh, the Speaker of the House who decided early on to announce, you know, a breakdown of seven Democrats and Republicans. I mean, it, 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 the layman from the outside looking in would say, of course you'd have to have equal number of people on that commission. Why would that be even suggested that a commission to look into this would have more Democrats and Republicans on it. That was a non-starter to begin with, wasn't it? Well, I think that um, a commission of this type should be balanced. I really do. Uh, I, I believe that we, we need to have this type of uh, investigation. And quite frankly, I think we'll end up with a commission. It may take us a moment. Sometimes we don't always get it right uh, when we'd like to, but uh, we eventually get it right. So I, I think we'll have the commission. And I think that a lot of this, uh, dear friends who are, are, are listening and tuning in, a lot of this emanates from the former president. Uh, we had a president who clearly, clearly was using race, he was using hate uh, as a political weapon. And we should have impeached him for the hatred that he engendered in this country. We impeached him for reasons other than his hatred. But we're talking now about how that hatred uh, caused the riot that took place, uh, the insurrection, how his hatred has, uh, has permeated society to some extent. And we've got to deal with that hate. If we don't deal with it, 
it will surely deal with us. And he was the source of it. And we, we, we didn't do what we should have done. Anybody who tolerates hate perpetuates it. To a certain extent, we tolerated his hate. And uh, it is now coming back to haunt us. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about, uh, I know part of the, uh, the voting rights issues that you're trying to push seems to be in direct uh, opposition of what's happening around the country in uh, Republican state houses where different rules are being put into place. And they really uh, are saying out loud that this, these rules that are putting in place are more for security of the election while to the uh, untrained eye, it looks like a coordinated effort to restrict some access. Uh, your sense on what's happening and why it's happening. Well, here's what's happening. Uh, my friends, unfortunately, uh, in the Republican Party, don't seem to want to integrate the party. Uh, it is predominantly white. It is controlled predominantly by white males. And uh, they don't seem to want to integrate the Republican Party. Uh, to do that, you would have to embrace some of the issues of importance of people of color, LGBTQIA plus persons. Uh, you'd have to embrace some of the issues of importance to the Islamic community, to the Latinx community, and to women. We just had a Women's History Month. Uh, why in the world would we need that in a country wherein we can actually have history taught properly? and get away from all these months. So they don't, they don't seem to want to integrate the party. They seem to want a party where white makes right and white might makes white right. Uh, what I'm saying to you is simply this. They seem to want power as opposed to progress in terms of racial healing, in terms of bringing this country together and uh, having us to become what we market ourselves to be. And that is a place where there's liberty and justice for all, where all persons are created equal and endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We, we can be that country, government of the people, by the people, for the people. But to do that, they are gonna have to integrate their party. And so far, they have segregated themselves. Uh, there is some integration taking place, but not nearly enough. Congressman Al Green, uh, 9th Congressional District, thank you for your time this morning. Appreciate you being a part of uh, this program and your perspective and, of course, taking part on this Newsmakers Extra. We appreciate you, sir. Stay safe. Look forward to seeing you back when you get back in the district. Thank you, sir. Thank you.